the first part of the landscape assignment, specifically the inventive landscape assignment, is to do some studies. And um, for the assignment, 50% of the, the study should be done from photos and 50% roughly um, in person. So I think, you know, anytime there's a nice day, you're gonna go out and do some studies. Let's see. So let's start with like the stuff that's in the sort of middle distance, like 50 to 100 feet away. Um, what I have been exploring is this idea of 10% marker or 10% um, uh, color pencil. And what you want to focus on in that middle distance is first the shape, right? So you can track out the main limbs of your trees if you want. Um, and the nice thing about this 10% marker is that it just sort of disappears. You're not gonna be able to see it well in this video, um, but you'll be able to, to see it when you draw with it. So I really like this. So start with sort of a generic shape. You know, your tree shape can be somewhat specific like, like I've done here, or it can be sort of like this. Basically it's a placeholder, right? That's all you're looking for. Um, with this one, I can get a little more specific. I can kind of get into some details of how this is going to happen and find some places where the contour varies and so on. The most important part of the middle distance and far distance stuff is this overall shape. And um, because that's really what's gonna come across. The specific leave, leaves are not gonna come across at all. Um, and if you start drawing specific leaves in this middle distance sort of thing, it's all just gonna get really confusing for you and you'll get really frustrated because you won't be able to get all the detail that you see in a photograph and that's okay. So. The trick to this is just to follow and track down some basic shapes and you can work through the contour and break up that generic sort of shape that, you, that you've created initially. So here I've created kind of this, this pretty crazy looking wonky kind of shape for this tree, right? I can sketch out some stuff on the ground to find its shadow and so on. Right now, what I've done to the shape is basically I've tried to make it interesting. So Will Weston's rule is basically your silhouette. The job of your silhouette is to be not boring, to be interesting. And then the job of whatever's in the center of the silhouette is to come forward. So what I need to do from from here is to kind of create some areas that are going to come forward. Right. So there's this big area right here which is very kind of bushy and full and that's going to hit the contour but it's going to overlap this area then there's another big area which i've indicated in the contour here that's going to overlap sort of behind that another area here that overlaps behind And then this stuff back here is in the far distance. In front of it, we've got a really cool branch pattern that comes out here. And you can see that whole branch come out. And then over here to the left, we've got some interesting stuff too coming out from behind this sort of area drooping down and stuff. There's one that comes up like right about here, goes up into the trees, and there's another that kind of comes up here and provides structure to everything up here. So I've done a lot that can actually do me pretty well for this landscape in terms of the sketching. 
And that's about as far as I want the sketching to go um, in this 10% marker. You can go as far as you want with the 10% marker because what's nice about it is that um, it disappears and anything you put on top of it um, is going to take over. So I mean, for instance, like if you use Prismacolor to go back on top, I mean, the darkest a Prismacolor can go is pretty dark compared compared to that. I mean, if you go up, if you go on top with pen and ink, which you can also do, it's also pretty dark. So um, I think I'll probably go back with a little bit of pen and ink, put some tone down with the Prismacolor, and do kind of a mixed media uh, mixed media thing. So I'm gonna start with the trunk. I'm gonna start sketchy. So one side of the trunk is pretty straight, the other is pretty curvy. And in the photo, it's not this, it's probably not this curvy, but I'm gonna exaggerate that for effect. And now what I need to do is kind of focus on these um, silhouettes and contours of the of all these shapes that I've created. And I'm gonna, just gonna kind of loosely sketch them out. And there might be some sub shapes in here that I can get into later. Um, and I can always knock those in with, uh, with value layers. So this area is pretty dense right back here. Now this area kind of ends here and overlaps there. And then behind it, there's a huge area that's going to be my like third layer back here. And it goes all the way out and around kind of ends here. Rule of thumb for landscapes is that you don't want to get into more, doing more than three layers, right? So a foreground, middle ground, and a background. If you start to do five, six layers, it's going to get really confusing. You're going to lose track of it, and you're going to lose the sense of clarity that you want to keep when you do all these landscapes. I'm just going to continue to work around into that silhouette. And I'm reobserving from the photo as I go and um, trying to create and maintain interesting shapes and stuff. So sometimes, so what I'm trying to do is like kind of contain the major areas where there's no light that goes through and then um, where there are areas that light goes through, I'm going to try to leave those a little bit blank. Because one of the toughest things about middle distance trees is getting a sense of transparency like you can see through to the background. And that's kind of a pain and that's one of the things that everybody struggles with um, no matter you know what level you're at of drawing. And I think that if you can get a handle on that transparency and letting light kind of come through the through the trees, you'll be a great um, landscape painter and drawer. I think once you can do that, you've kind of just mastered foliage. So there's this huge network of branches through here that I'll want to pay attention to eventually. And I can kind of sketch out some major areas of these branches. As I go. And then I can find myself a couple of blank spots to kind of emphasize. So now I've got all my major areas. There might be some more to do in here, probably. Now what I need to do is, you know, again, I've always got my five value system in my head. 
So I've got white, black, or the, at least the darkest value. I've got my very faint half tone, my middle ground tone, and my shadow core that's not quite black. Five value system, very distinct values. So in silhouette, the bottom of this tree is pretty much just going to be a flat area that's absolutely dark. So I can go ahead and do that and get my tree anchored um, in that value. This area, most of it is actually going to be in core tone. And so I can go in with this core tone into here. And just straight up knock that down. Right now I've hit the half tone, or the tone rather. But I want to hit the core because it needs to get dark. There, I'm hitting the chord now. The light side of it is probably going to be just half tone. And then I can go in and I can add some core bits just to kind of get some texture in. A little variety within that area. Now the tree as a whole is going to at least be this half tone. Trees are dark, generally speaking. So I can go in to anywhere in this whole area and I can start to introduce half tones. And for big areas that are all in mass, I can just do half tone over the whole thing. So pretty much this whole area is, is almost completely covered up. So I can do half tone over the whole thing. Here I'm just going through and bumping in half tone. And I'm trying to be sure to leave some blank spaces inside the silhouette of the tree to help me out with that whole idea of transparency. So now I've got a pretty good tree silhouette going. I can pull in some half tones um, where I have sort of like floating masses where they're not kind of dis where they're just kind of disconnected. And then I can go over on this left side of the tree. Almost everything is kind of in the tone in the background. So I can go in and start to fill that in. The other thing about approaching landscape when you're practicing like this is um, to be sure that you practice stuff at different distances. One of the biggest problems is dealing with plants and foliage at your foreground, middle ground, background areas. And I think if you can handle all the distances that get thrown at you, you're going to be in good shape. Biggest problem um, is probably this middle distance thing because it is tricky. And what you can do is you can use tones to separate areas. So I have like my half tone here and I can put my tone behind it to sort of push that up. And I can also come back later and uh, bump up my line work and everything too. I can put some tone into the upper areas of the tree as well. Especially where I've got like large patches that are kind of dark and then Definitely on the underside. 
where there's not as much light getting to the tree. And then I can come back in with my pen or I can come back in with the darkest bit of the pencil and I can pick up some branch work. And I can darken up some specific branches. The trick to this is to pick up and lose the branches again um, in various spots so you can kind of see where they're going, but you can't see them the whole time. You kind of have to like let them disappear into the trees. And maybe just imply where they're going, you know? And you can do that out over a bunch of areas. And eventually it all starts to hold together. I think the trick to this is doing this enough so that it makes sense. And then, you know, I have some areas over here where the branches don't really make any sense. So I might need to add some stuff to kind of help that out, help that along. Now I've got something like reasonably tree-ish. I can come back with pen and I can uh, bump up some contour if I need to. The trick to contour is to make it not even, right? You don't want the contour to be exactly the same all the way around, right? So you want some areas to be thick, some areas to be like super thin, sketchy, and use that whole variety of what's possible. And you can take this as far as you want, but I would consider this a pretty good plant study because this is something that I can take into another landscape and like drop into it and refine it and have a pretty good idea of, of what I'm gonna do. I'll uh, stop here and do more plant studies with uh, stuff up close.